Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we are going to look at what you need to do to migrate from Power BI Workspace Collections to Power BI Embedded, because you need to do it now. Let's do this. If you're finding Guy in a Cube for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. We need to talk about Power BI Workspace Collections because there is a deadline that is looming very quickly. At the end of June, June 30th, Power BI Workspace Collections is going to be shut down. This has been replaced with the consolidated Power BI REST API and the Power BI Embedded Resource that is available in Azure. And so who's affected? anyone that's actually using Power BI Workspace Collections that does not have an enterprise agreement that goes beyond June 30th. So for customers that have contracts existing that go past that June 30th date, you're still okay. But for anyone that's not covered by that, the service will stop working for you on June 30th. So this means that any visuals or reports that you're embedding today will stop rendering for you. So you need to do something. So we've got the old Power BI workspace collections, which is the old way of doing embedding for ISVs or for customers, that type of activity. We introduced the new Power BI embedded resource in Azure back in October of 2017. And so you need to migrate from the old Power BI embedded workspace collections to the new approach for doing embedding for your customers. So for ISVs, for custom applications, that type of behavior, you need to get over to the new Power BI experience as soon as possible. I cannot stress that enough, this is no joke. Okay, so what stays the same even if I migrate to this new experience? You're still gonna be able to create reports inside of Power BI Desktop and you're still gonna be able to embed reports and visuals into your application. Also the Power BI embedded capacity, these are the A SKUs that can be purchased inside of Azure. So if you're keeping all of your billing from the Azure side of things, you can still do that with the Power BI embedded capacity, similar to how you did it with Power BI embedded workspace collections. Okay, so what's different about these two? This is a capacity-based resource now on the Power BI embedded side, and it is billed hourly, but you have flexibility. So you can create it, you can stop it, you can delete it, you can scale it up, scale it down, all of that's done, you pay for what you use. And we offer different SKUs that offer different pricing. This starts as little as $1 per hour. The new approach does require you have at least one Power BI Pro license. This is for the master account, and this is what you use inside of your application. The other thing that's different is we are now just using the main Power BI REST API. So there's just one REST API that we use to call into. We also have the JavaScript API and that is used also. It's just one JavaScript API that you can take advantage of for your applications, regardless of how you're embedding. There is also an Azure Resource Manager API available specifically for the Power BI embedded resource, the capacity that you can use to manage scaling and things of that nature. So that's available for you on the Azure side. To get started with the migration, we do have a document that will walk you through what this process is. You can head over to docs.powerbi.com. I will have a link down in the description below that will take you directly there. There is also a, an application you can get on GitHub that will help you with this migration. The document outlines the following steps for you to actually go do. So first off, just take inventory of what you have and what's going to need to migrate. So what reports, you know, what Power BI desktop files, how is this gonna break out from a workspace perspective? The app that you can get from GitHub will help you kind of line up all of that and set up what the migration is actually gonna do before you actually implement that migration. In Power BI Workspace Collections, we had this concept of a workspace collection and you created workspaces inside of that. Inside of Power BI itself and Power BI Embedded, we have app workspaces. So that may translate one-to-one -one, or this may be an opportunity for you to clean up what you have and maybe restructure a little. Step two is gonna be to make sure you've got your Azure AD accounts already set up. This means your tenant and your Power BI tenant. Make sure that that's all ready to go. If you don't already have your Power BI tenant, just make sure that you get all of that set up before you try and do the migration because it's gonna be needed. Step three is gonna be app registration and require permission. So you're gonna have to create an app registration for the use of the Power BI REST APIs. I'll also, you'll also see a link up here of how to create the app registration for Power BI Embedded. It should only take you a few minutes to get that set up. The fourth step is you're going to have to create those app workspaces inside of Power BI. So you're going to want to sign into Power BI with your Power BI Pro user and create those app workspaces that the migration tool is going to move things over into. So they have to exist 
before we can actually do the migration. So make sure that that's all up and running. Then for step five, we're gonna actually migrate the content. We gotta move that over and that app I pointed you to and the link down below will be a link to the GitHub repo where you can go get that is what's gonna help you with that migration. You can obviously do it on your own by hand and script out everything from the API usage, but this app's really gonna help you to get things going for you. Step six is gonna kind of be optional. You can create and upload new reports to those Power BI workspaces as well. So if you have ongoing development where you've got new things that need to go in for your application, you can obviously go ahead and do that at any time. Step seven, we're gonna to wanna to rebuild the application that we have. So currently those were pointing to the APIs used for Power BI workspace collections that's not gonna be usable anymore in the new experience. So we're gonna to have to repoint those over to the main Power BI REST APIs. Step eight, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have any assignment for the users that are logging into your application. Make sure that that maps accordingly to that master account that you have. So you may have multiple master accounts or you may have multiple workspaces that are handling your customers per that one master account that you're using. So you'll just wanna make sure that you have whatever mapping your application needs to get your customers to the right workspaces, dashboards, reports that are needed for them to function properly. So make sure that that mapping is in place. And then lastly, you're gonna to wanna to move to production. So when you move to production, this is when the dedicated capacity is gonna be required. So you can purchase it inside of Azure and then assign your app workspaces inside of Power BI to that dedicated capacity. It all has to be within the same tenant, but if they both exist in the same tenant and you have capacity administrator rights to it, you should be able to assign that app workspace with no problem. And if you're already purchasing Power BI Premium from the office side for use with your actual Power BI tenant just for normal needs, you can use that for embedding as well. So either one will work, we just need dedicated capacity backing that app workspace when you move to production. There is a short timeline in which you need to get this done, like I said, the service will be shut off on June 30th, 2018. So you need to make sure that you're making the moves now to get migrated accordingly. Please don't wait until July 1st and then call support and say, hey, what happened? Otherwise it's gonna be a bad day for everybody. All right, do you have any questions about how this migration works or just Power BI embedded in general? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know, I'll be happy to answer it for you. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.